Okay, so it's the weekend and uh, currently it's 1 a.m. Um, January uh, 12, 2020. And I guess we have some time to continue the bookkeeper project and just see where we left off. Okay, so I'm going to start with the schema. I believe last time we had the accounting entries table with the following fields date prepared posted particular status book and in relation to that an accounting entry will have multiple journal entries so a journal entry can be either a debit or a credit given by the post type it will have an amount uh, related of course to an accounting code and related to an accounting entry id so what we currently have in implemented is the um, accounting codes so it's basically our chart of accounts with assets liabilities and uh, equity so let's let's just say that we have a um, let's create a new accounting code uh, let's call this um, maybe a food say that this is accounting code 0012 under category assets all right so we have food over there and let me just edit cash okay this is one one okay so you have one one cash and one two food and uh and basically i just put this in for testing later of the uh, accounting entries uh, hmm. right to see if it works and for the accounting entries themselves okay, we have nothing yet we just have a button here and I think this should trigger something not sure why it's not working the okay, JavaScript's okay okay there we go so once we click on accounting entry we have to supply the date prepared the particular as well as the book where it will be under and let's just fix the model so it sort of more um, more intuitive when we input something okay so let's put the book first before the particular let's try that again okay so we have date prepared defaults to the current date you have the general journal for or cash receipts for the book and uh, particular which is the description of this particular accounting entry and once we save that okay just to check out where we're at okay so we have a javascript object here called index which is defined as a uh, since we're using rail 6 it's defined as a pack um, pages index so it's a, a uh, self-executing uh, javascript object or self-executing function that references button click on click is this currently working i don't think this is working yet oh no this is in pages um counting entries index okay this is what we're looking for so we have a button new when you click it it displays the modal and when you click the button save we get the values from the inputs as referenced by input date prepared particular and in input book uh, we're getting the values via jquery putting it in a bunch of variables putting it in a, um, a javascript object um, when we click this we want to disable the fields here have a message message that says loading and then we try to post it under url create now the the ajax function via jquery will have two methods success and error and it can catch the response as returned by the server okay all right so what we want to happen is that on success it would redirect to a new page or the show page for our accounting entries and um I think that's what we'll try to uh, do in the first few minutes for this um, devlog. Right, so I, I think this is working now because if I click save, okay, we have loading here. 
but if we check our server we actually have an error okay so we know that the dates are rather the values are being passed and uh, I have a runtime error here because I forcibly put in a race under our accounting entries controller okay so the accounting entries controller I actually have two Okay, one controller is the one to display the pages under the controller's directory, and the other one is to capture the um, the API calls from JavaScript under a, the API v1 directory. Okay, so this is the typical Rails part, and this is the API version of accounting entries, the one where the accounting entry pages will interact with. And as you can see here, we have raised the message here. That's why we have a runtime error for our server. So the first thing I'll try to do is I have to validate this part. Uh, I want to make sure that we have a date prepared book in particular before we actually create a new accounting entry. And that's sort of part of the business logic. And the way I usually do it is I'll have a um, another directory here called operations. Okay, this is largely based on the uh, command pattern. I love the command pattern. Um, I've been using it in a lot of my projects and basically what the command pattern does is that it allows you to create or it, it it's a it's a pattern that follows the the um, the convention of having an action as a class and that action will have at least two methods a the constructor which accepts all the necessary input parameters and an execute method to actually perform the business logic and the way i do it is that just like the grouping in rails accounting entries controller for all things related to accounting entries the operations would have its own corresponding um, domain so to speak so I'd have another director here called accounting entries and within that I'll have the different operations for accounting entries so let's say I like to validate create okay so you can see here the name of the class is given by the action that I'd like to implement or the business rule I'd like to implement Okay, so in this case we start off with a module we'll say that this module is accounting entries and then we have a class called validate create okay the constructor will accept a bunch of arguments i usually like to have arguments as um, a named parameter inside the constructor function as, as well as a run method okay um, you can we can also have this as execute um, but I think a lot of other projects that uses the command pattern uses the run as the convention okay so we'll have this as an initialization um, an instance variable within our class and uh, what we're expecting here in the validate create the arguments that we're expecting would be the date prepared the book and the particular so we have date prepared and the book as well as the particular all of which can be extracted from our args which is expected to be a hash so we say date prepared the book as well as the particular okay. have everything in nice um, alignment for the equal sign for the value and the variables okay so we have these as instance variables in our constructor we simply get those values and the objective for this particular command pattern validate create is to render a bunch of errors given by an array Okay, so ideally when we call run this one actually returns the array of errors right uh -huh. all right so inside run we can implement the different rules for this particular command pattern in this case we want to check if date prepared is present so if it's blank that's the only time we'd add something to our errors array saying something like date prepared required if uh, book is blank as well we'll say book required and if uh, particular is blank you can also say 
particular required <clears throat> okay so this may be some sort this this may look longer than um, our usual model validation but the idea here is that the uh, command pattern in terms of validating something uh, creating an action that validates a particular business rule uh, can be flexible right so the model can only validate us uh, for a certain limit for example for the default validations that rails includes but if you want to have something more specialized the command pattern will allow us to create those um, more complicated validation rules okay. but in any case let's just say that uh, this one produces a bunch of errors in the case that these parameters are blank and if we were to integrate it in our accounting entries controller api we'd have something like the following we're in we'd like to build args first where args comes from the parameters okay so we want a hash to be passed to this particular uh, command pattern validate create so this is coming from the request okay and let's just be verbose about it book here and then we have particular and then we plug in the necessary values accordingly Once we ha have our array of args, then we can utilize the command pattern by calling it, by instantiating an instance of validate create. We pass it to a variable called CMP and we pass our args hash as the um, the uh, argument for our um, constructor and then we call run okay or run okay so we want to get errors and we know that we can actually say errors equals cmd.run since we know that run actually returns a bunch of errors um, okay, let's simplify this instead of cmd we can say something like errors equals validate create dot run okay so we can eliminate this and we get a bunch of errors according to the rules that we implemented under the run method okay i think this looks cleaner now we can have our if statement we can say if errors size is greater than zero then it means we had a bunch of errors and we render back we render that back to the client in the form of json and we say errors errors else we render message okay and within the else condition we can create the actual accounting entry so uh, usually what I'd like to do is have the actual creation also as a custom command pattern Okay, so I can now have a create method here, or rather a create class here. Okay, it's similar to our validate create. It also follows the command pattern. So let's just copy paste that there. Create, we have our variables that we pass from our args, our, um, named argument. And essentially what run will do is that it will create a new instance of accounting entry. So we can say something like accounting entry equals accounting entry dot new and we pass in our variables. So we say date prepared, date prepared, book, book, particular, particular. And then we say accounting entry dot save and return the accounting entry or simply counting entry. 
Okay, now again, this might seem long, but if we had some other custom way to interact or to create the actual object, then we can wrap it nice in a nice logical class called create, thus thinning out our controllers. Okay, so we'll probably return to this if we have additional rules for create, but in order to call that in our controller, then we'll call it here. If there are no errors, then we know that we can actually create that object or a new accounting entry record. So we can say new dot run and pass our args to it. Okay, optionally, we can extract that newly created accounting entry. Since we know that run returns the instance of the newly created accounting entry and we can add the ID of the newly created accounting entry together with the response of our uh, server. Okay, so we have at the very least some basic workflow for our API. We get our needed input from our request parameters, put it up in a hash, pass it to a validator, check if there are any errors. If there are errors, we return that errors as a uh, JSON object and we can optionally put a status so let's say 400 to say to dictate that we actually had uh, an error so it would actually fall in the error part of our JavaScript if there are no errors then we call another method or another command pattern class create that is our custom command pattern to create the actual accounting entry Okay, so now that we have that flow in place, let's try to uh, edit our JavaScript to try to capture those values. Okay, so it should fall here under response. Okay, let's do success first. So we know that we can, if we go back to our API controller, we know that if the accounting entry was successfully created, then we return the ID as part of the response object. And we want to redirect to show page, so we can actually say window.location.href is equal to, let's say our, um, our route will be accounting entries plus response.id. If we have an error, we'll try to parse first the, um, the, the object being returned, okay, which is a, an object corresponding to with, with the key errors whose value is a bunch of um, error messages given by the errors array here. So I believe we can get that using the response text value of our response object here. However, uh, we have to parse it because we're expecting a JSON value. So we can say something like var errors will be equal to um, json.parse, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so this part here will give us the uh, JSON object here in the case of an error given by status 400. Okay, if we didn't actually put a status here, it will uh, fall to status 200, giving us a success signal. Okay, so just to differentiate the two, we have to make sure that we're passing the status 400 so that it falls to the error part of our AJAX query. Now, since this object will have a key of errors, if we just wanted the array, then we'll also notate this, or we'll call it using dot errors. And we'd like to display those errors in our messages part. So what we can do is we can say something like, uh, we can build our message string. Okay, so let's say something like error string will be equal to, let's say an unsorted list of errors, error string plus equals, let's just fix this here, 
and we can sort of loop against all those errors and keep on adding to our error string as a bunch of list items errors at index i okay something like that okay we get our error string and this is what we put in our messages message um, container so we say html will be our error string and uh, afterwards we have all these things be activated our ui be activated again so all these values will be false. Let's put a note here. Reactivate UI. Okay, so that's it's probably a handful. So we have to first make sure that um, error part is working. So what we can do is we can actually force this to have an error so let's say not yet implemented okay so regardless of what happened what happens it should return an error array with um, with some message in it okay so let's try this again All right so you say new accounting entry save Okay, so nothing's happening. Let's check our server. Uninitialized constant accounting entries. Under line 15. Okay, so apparently... What's happening? Apparently, uh, it doesn't know how to read the accounting entries module. I think I need to uh, put the operations as part of the Rails path um, or as part of the context. Otherwise, I can call something like operations, I believe, to make this work. However, if I do that, I'll have to wrap this around a um, another module called operations. So I'll have something like module operations for this class and this one as well okay so it's sort of like a nested module okay, let's try that again okay still have an error this time uninitialized constant operations okay so still on the same line Okay, so apparently we're not reading operations properly. So let's try to reload our server. Maybe that will do the trick. Okay, still uninitialized constant operations. Okay, so let's try to review this. Okay, so maybe we have to make sure that uh, operations is part of context hmm. hope I have internet uninitialized constant rails 6 include directory as part of um, path if I'm not mistaken Okay, let's see. Okay, I think this is the same problem. I suspect it's spring. I know I did this before by having some sort of initialization 
or initializer inside the um, the configuration of the Rails app. Make sure names in your file path represents the name in your module path. Right. Try this. Now, here we go. Auto load paths. Rail six auto load paths. Auto load paths automatically pick custom directories under app. For example, if your application has presenters or services, they are automatically added to auto load paths. The array of auto load paths can be extended by mutating config auto load paths in application.rb. However, this is discouraged. Okay. So it should have worked. Should have worked. Uh, maybe the first link was correct. Let's try this. <clears throat> operations. Okay, so we still have an uninitialized constant operations. Let's see. Okay, this is weird. We should be able to call it by the console if it's actually working. operations app operations okay we have accounting entries um, accounting entries validate create Expected file to define validate create, but it didn't. Okay, so okay, so I think this one is working now. Oops. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So it can now read it. I'm not sure what happened. I think the server restart did the trick. Okay, so essentially we're back to our old version wherein we have a module validate create so we should do the same with the actual create command class okay just to make sure it should recognize create okay so it recognizes create now all right so let's try that again let me just refresh this new accounting entry and we still have an error, uninitialized constant operations. Okay, so because we forgot, we can now remove operations part here. 
and just leave accounting entries. It's our sort of top level module. Okay, there you go. So every time we save, we try to save it. Okay, it interacts with the server via Ajax. And uh, if there are errors, it returns the error, and then it's it, it gets caught by our JavaScript. Okay, we get the array of errors, and we display it in our model accordingly. If we put particulars here, test, then we only have an error message here. Okay, so. Now that we know the errors part is working, we can now remove the not yet implemented. So it should push through once we hit, once we put in a particular and we can now create the actual accounting entry given by our create method. Which just inserts a, an empty accounting entry into our um, database. All right, so let's try that. Okay, let me just make sure I have some validations in place. Okay, so I need a status. Okay, so this will still fail because I, the, the, the validation for the status field should be present and should be included in the, in the statuses. But of course, we want it to be a default value. A, we want it to have a default pending value um, as soon as the record is created. So. What I usually do for this is we have a method called load defaults, and the logic for load defaults is that if it it checks if it's essentially some custom code. So if self that status is a blank, then automatically the status is equal to pending. Now these defaults can be loaded or it can be invoked using hooks such as before validation. Okay, so. Before we call save or update for a Rails model, we can uh, sort of call a method before that those two methods get invoked, which we pass to the before validation function in our model, and we pass the name of the method we'd like to call, in this case, load defaults. Okay, we also need to have a date prepared, so we can also have that. So we'll say if self that date prepared is blank we say that the date prepared is equal to date dot to date okay so in case the user actually forgets to have a date prepared value supplied when creating a new accounting entry okay so let's see if this works we'll now try to save this now let me just make sure that we excuse me Okay, we go to the show page, which we don't have yet. So let me just create an HTML for that. And make sure that our controller, okay, so we have accounting entry right there, which goes to the show page. And let's just put something here. Display the actual accounting entry. Let's print out the ID just to make sure that we actually created an accounting entry. Okay, so we save this. All right, so we have an error. Uh, let's see what happened. All right, undefined method or variable date prepared for the create method. Let's see what happened there. Okay, so in this case, we're trying to create the new accounting entry, but we're using a local variable instead of the instance variable right here. Okay, so let's just edit that. Okay, before we save, before we return the newly created accounting entry. So again, test the validation. Okay, particular is required. So put test there. And we now go to the show page if the accounting entry is successfully created. Okay, let's do another bunch of stuff. So let's say that we also display 
the status of the accounting entry and sh this should default to pending okay pending right there uh, you can also display the date prepared Right, something like that. Okay, and we have our accounting entry. Okay. Now, the idea here, uh, taking the same concept um, to consideration, uh, we'd like to post this accounting entry using the same technique that we did for um, uh, for creating the new accounting entry. Uh, so let's say that we have a button here. Okay, so we want to check if accounting entry is pending. Then we display the button to post that accounting entry. Or we can say something like approve. Okay, give this an ID, button approve. Okay, uh, but we don't have this method yet pending. Um, so we can create that in our model and say def pending, which will return true if the status is equal to pending. Okay. So what we want to do is that if we click approve, then we'll have another modal okay, that says uh, yes or no, if you really want to approve this entry. Just copy paste the template for this modal right here. Let's give this an ID, say modal approve. Change the HTML, we'll say approve, counting entry. We don't need the UI, so inside our, um, we'll still need the message though. Uh, so let's say we have something here that says, are you sure you want to post this entry? Okay, we have close and save. Just switch these of course cancel we'll dismiss we'll dismiss the modal uh, we also have a button save let's call this button approve or rather confirm approve and confirm button for its text All right so you have the model there modal rather modal there and similar to what we did with index we'll include this as a partial Right, um, and we need to create custom JavaScript for this page, for the show page of our accounting entry. Okay. Now for that, we can create a new pack. Show.js, okay, so we have this nice little convention wherein each JavaScript file specific to a particular page in our Reels application will be named after that page so in this case index.js will correspond to the javascript that governs the index page of our accounting entries the same way show.js will be the javascript that governs the show.html.erb part okay no fancy javascript frameworks for this it's just plain old javascript with the same pattern so i'll need bootstrap however this one will be um, show Okay, we'll still have message, modal approve. We'll also have button approve as well as button confirm approve. Okay, we don't need the input. We need the authenticity token and we need a URL for approve. So let's say that this one points to accounting entries slash approve 
Okay, we still have the structure of getting the authenticity token, but we also need the variable for the ID of our accounting entry. Okay, so I've had it as a variable here, and I'm expected that the ID will be passed together with the options. So you can see options.id, which we'll pass later on in our JavaScript, so that when we try to approve it, we'll tell the server that we want to approve this particular accounting entry. We cache the necessary DOM, which will be button approve instead of uh, button new. Message will still stay the same, so we say button approve. Look for whatever that element is called button approve. We also have one for a button confirm approve. And of course, we have the one for a message. We don't have any input, so I think this will do. And let's now do the events. So if the user clicks on button approve, then we display the modal approve, which we forgot to reference here. So modal approve is equal to modal approve. Okay, so we simply show it. Now for the confirm approve, the only data we'll need will be the authenticity token as well as the ID, okay? which we already have passed in our uh, initialization function for this self-executing JavaScript. Okay, so I'd like to uh, disable the buttons. So that would just be the button confirm approve dot prop disabled rather disabled is true okay we have our same message to be loading now our url will be url approve and it has this it should have the same structure except for we activate ui button confirm approve will now be false okay, to reactivate it okay so we're also still expecting the error string an error or rather an array of errors to be returned by um, this url the um, accounting entries approved which is an api to actually approve an accounting entry okay so we have show right there and i think we need to edit the x part okay so instead of index show Okay, so we rendered the modal partial here. Next thing we'll do is we'll also load the JavaScript. Show. Okay, so it's very similar to our index, but instead of index, we call the show, of course. Now, um, we need an ID, right? Um, and we need to pass that ID. Okay, so we don't know how to pass that ID yet here. And we need to pass that ID as part of our options that we pass to our show.js object. Now to get the ID, okay, what we can do is we can store the ID of accounting entry as a, uh, an HTML field. In a div, let's call this parameters with a data ID, which will e which will be equal to the accounting entries ID. Okay. Okay, so it's just an empty div to host the um, accounting entry ID, which we can then extract. Since we're using jQuery, parameters, parameters will be equal to parameters. And then from there, we can extract the ID by saying data ID, which we in turn pass to our show object. Okay, so I think everything is in order. Let's 
refresh this cancel this stuff okay so once we click approve there's our approve accounting entry modal if you click confirm it should interact with the api server which we don't have yet so let's check our routes and let's add another entry here accounting entries approve to accounting entries approve let's just make sure that we're posting to the proper url okay accounting entries approved right there okay so now in our api we can now create a new method dev show and what we need is the accounting entry you can say accounting entry where id is equal to whatever id we pass to our api and get the first entry now the using the reason why we're using where instead of um, find uh, is so that if you use find and we actually forgot to pass an ID, then uh, we'll actually throw an exception. Okay, so at the very least, when we call first, and this one is actually null, we can't find an accounting entry with this ID, then accounting entry will be null as well. Okay, so let's build our arcs. So it has the same sort of pattern as our create. We pass our accounting entry to it and we'll have our own validation validate approve for accounting entries which also returns an array of errors and then we can check if errors that size is greater than zero then it means we have errors else if there are no errors then we can say accounting entries approve and we pass the same args to it okay, it's a very similar structure of course we render json accordingly we say render errors or rather render json errors errors status 400 else we try to approve if this one is successful then we say render json message is okay and we return the id of our accounting entry no status so by default it will return 200 Okay, so now that we have this in place we have to code our validator and our approve command pattern okay. so similarly under operations we'll have validate approve just copy the template for validate create change all create to approve and uh, we still have args but we're expecting an accounting entry object to be passed and the presence of the accounting entry will be a validation okay. however if the accounting entry is present you can say else if accounting entry is not pending because we can only approve accounting entries that are pending you can say errors accounting entry is not pending okay, we still have to create this function so we can say def not pending self.status is not equal to pending okay so have the errors there and uh right so we have another pattern or another command called approve which is similar to create actually it's much more similar to validate approve than create because we still need that accounting entry parameter 
to be passed and let's just simplify approve for now once we run approve it will simply update this accounting entry to status approved date approved to be the date today okay we might want to customize day to day so we can say that the current date is equal to args current date However, if current date is not present, we can use the default date dot to date. This one will become current date. Okay, so we can track when it was actually approved. Okay. So let's test that out. Let's restart the server first. okay so we have an error let's check it out approve could not be found for accounting error entries controller okay, let's check it out okay we don't have the text approve what was the error proof could not be found Counting entries controller, which line did it occur in? Let's see. Okay, uh, it should not be show. Okay, that's my mistake. It should actually be approve, right? Because again, in our routes, the approve URL falls down to the pure method of our accounting entries controller. Okay. I guess it's important to take note here that since we're under a namespace, the uh, resolving URL will be API v1 accounting entries approved. However, if we pass the two clause to it, uh, it always starts in the root routes section. So uh, two accounting entries approved. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Um, accounting entries here will correspond to, of course, the accounting entries controller within the namespace API and v1. Okay, so now that we have that in place, let's restart the server. Hopefully this will work now. Just to make sure that it's actually hitting the errors, uh, the validate approve, validate approve command pattern. implemented right let's try this out okay so we have here not yet implemented for the approve of the accounting entry okay so it should be in place okay so now let's customize the validate approve according to the business rules of an accounting entry first and foremost we'd like to get the journal entries associated with Counting entry. Okay, but we're not sure if accounting entry is present. So what we can do is, if accounting entry is present, that's the only time we try to extract the necessary journal entries from accounting entry. So this one performs a query to the database because our accounting entry model has many journal entries. If journal entries dot size, okay, so we we'll always have to have at least two entries. So if journal entries dot size is less than two, then we say. should have at least two journal entries which we don't have yet of course so if we try to approve this it should say oops we have an error numerical validator for journal entry okay so let's see a journal entry model numerical 
I think it's numeric, not numerical. Let's try that again. It's still an error. We don't have numeric validator. I keep forgetting what the validator is for numeric. Or did they actually change it in real six? Numerica oh it's numericality. Okay, numericality. Okay, so we say numericality is true. Let's try that again. Okay, so it said should have at least two journal entries. Okay. Uh before you try to program the journal entries. We actually should program the journal entries now. Uh huh. Okay, so the idea here is um, well, if we have approve, we should also have destroy. So we'll follow the same pattern um, when we have a bunch of command patterns accordingly. Uh, okay, so. where we start I guess in the show page start with the UI so if it's pending that's the only time we can actually delete the accounting entry let's have this as button danger and let's call this button delete Okay, so we're also expecting a modal for delete. Similar to approve. Let's just delete all approve instances and make it delete. Are you sure you want to delete this entry? Right? So it will have, well, confirm delete. Okay, yeah. Confirm delete will be our new confirm button. And we can now edit our JavaScript part. Okay, to include the necessary UI elements. So we have button delete and button confirm delete. We also have a new model for delete, as well as a new URL. So let's say URL delete will point to API v1 accounting entries delete. Okay, let's reference our input elements button delete. Confirm, not approve, confirm, delete. And finally, we have modal delete. Okay, let's program in the behavior button delete. Show the modal button, confirm delete on click. It will do something. Okay, let's just copy it. It's very similar, it should be very similar to approve. However, the difference is okay, so I think we can get all instances of button approve and change it to delete okay, for that section all right so confirm delete if okay so we'll change this right so if it successfully deleted the record we'll redirect to 
the accounting entries URL or the index page for accounting entries uh, URL delete right here okay loading confirm delete and I guess this will do let's try to test this uh, let's just make sure okay so we did include it in our HTML we programmed in the UI logic in our JavaScript I guess what's left to do will be the controller so very similar with approve just copy paste this and we'll name the, name the method delete and all instances of approve will be delete okay so we can have a custom validation for deleting an accounting entry in the case that we uh, have more complex um, business rules for deleting Okay, so you have validate delete.rb similar to approve just copy paste that there change all instances of approve to delete so the um, okay this rule still stays the same and I guess that's the only rule we need for now if it's not pending then we can't delete this particular uh, record okay finally we have delete similar to approve okay, this should be much simpler um, we just need the accounting entry and instead of updating we'll simply say destroy right of course we can get more complicated if we had more rules then we can code that into our command pattern let's check our api quick and see if it follows it accordingly okay delete okay so once we delete we don't really return an id so we can actually say simply message okay meaning the delete was actually successful let's review our code okay so you can see uh, most of our on the, on the api layer most of our methods are sort of tidied up or wrapped or the logic at least are wrapped around a command pattern class okay that seems to be in order so let's just restart the server try to refresh this hopefully there are no errors okay so we have the delete right there are you sure you want to delete this entry if we say confirm oops we have an error okay so we have no route matches post delete check out our route file okay so we don't have delete here yet okay so that will give our configuration for our routes try delete okay so we deleted it accordingly uh, let's try to create that again test okay, let's change the buttons here to save I want the save to be at the left and the close to be at the right okay so in this case um, let's change the models create or rather new I shouldn't even create okay yeah in any case let's just switch these all right so we have save right there let's create an accounting entry we have it right there okay so let's just create a simple um, table to display the accounting entries okay so apparently we rendered the list partial which will give us our table i usually like to use a small table for this one Okay, so this will be our header of course we have our body and we have our um, say date prepared you can also say date approved 
and uh, let's see what else yeah we can probably put in the particular here okay. let's just have another column for actions So line this or rather uh, class equals text center I believe Let's see how that looks like okay 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 all right and in our body we'll loop through all the accounting entries I usually like to use the O variable for the um, the temporary or for each element in a certain loop representing the uh, object so O for object okay so we first display the particular and then we have the date prepared and date approved Okay, forgot the status. Okay, we'll probably design this later on. And of course for actions, let's say that this one will just go to a link. Counting entry path. Since we're using resource resource routes, okay, so we're expecting that we do have an accounting entry path show given by this path right here. Let's give it a class, just a small button. Let's say info button sm if I'm not mistaken. Oops. Date approved. Oh, okay, so it's not date approved. It's actually date posted. Which will be equivalent to the date approved. Okay, so we have spending right there. Test, date prepared, date approved. If we click show, we go to the show page of our accounting entry. Okay, so let's see okay we can't approve this yet okay because we need to have at least two journal entries okay so maybe i'll cut it uh cut this segment here just to review we coded it a bunch of command patterns in our operations for the necessary business rules on the api layer of our accounting entries we can probably recycle these methods in some other part of our application, but for now, they would reside or they would be called in our API layer. So we opted to use the command pattern, so our code is much more modularized and our controller methods follow a certain pattern instead of having the logic squeezed into, a sing in into a each method of our API layer. Okay. Uh, the validation okay we the validate methods or the validate command pattern classes will return simply an array of errors that we capture in our javascript for that particular page okay so for example here okay if there are errors then we display the errors inside our javascript or inside our message dom which is queried by dot message okay so before we program the approve i think the approve method first because the delete is already working redirects back to the index page okay 
Okay, and we'll go back to accounting entries and we have something like that. All right, so the next thing I will probably do will be the, we also have an error, I think. Okay, every time I try to show the initial show, um, the initial show is not working. It's not being referenced properly. Okay, but we do have it here. weird but if I refresh it then we can actually use show okay so uh, let's stop it there first for now just make sure that we commit this okay just have checkpoint for now oh it's 2 20 a.m. in the morning Kind of sleepy, but uh, I guess that will do for this segment. Internet's a bit weak, so hopefully we can pass that and push that to GitHub. And there. Okay, so that's it for this video.